Ladies and gentlemen, on the Visa YouTube channel, we have delved into the world of football investigations, and today is a special one, as I really enjoyed making the football's darkest iceberg video, because I gave you guys a lot of stories in the world of football that I never even knew, and a lot of you didn't know too, and I really want to go into one different story that I have found only just recently and I am surprised that I had no idea that this even happened and this could be I may want to say is the worst story of a football club the highest rise to the darkest and deepest fall I have ever seen and I must say this is not a normal story of some financial difficulties this is I'll be straight up this is um, this is criminal, this goes back to mafias and gang warfare, okay? So if you guys do enjoy, smash the like button and also subscribe to the channel. Let's try to hit 2,500 likes. I don't know if this video may do quite well because it's kind of a random name club that people may not be able to find online. So if you do find this, then please do drop it some love and comment down below what football story would you want me to to go into next because I'm convinced that 90% of people who are watching this video had no idea that this was happening. So let's get into the horrifying story of Gazalek Ayatsu. Let's get into the video. If you play FIFA 23 and want to improve your team but not go for the effort of actually playing the game, then make sure to go down below in top of the description to use them and buy. And make sure at checkout to use code VISA. This story goes back to 2013. Gazalek Ayatsio were in the third tier of French football. Back in the 2013-14 season, a team led by Thierry Lory. I'm so sorry if I may butcher a lot of French names, okay? Get used to it, I'm so sorry. After a great start to the year and being favoured to go back directly to Ligue 2, after a 4-2 defeat at Amiens, they were promoted to Ligue 2 in third place in the table. Gasolite returns to Ligue 2 for the 14-15 season and also French technician Thierry Loré found a great dynamic with the squad. In particular, with some great players like Julien Francois and Luis Poggi, Jeremy Brechet and Gregory Puyo, who helped them finish second place in Ligue 2, and for the first time in their history, Gazalek Ayatsio were in the elite of French football for the 2015-2016 season. They were in Ligue 1. This rise was orchestrated by a great mind in Thierry Loré. However, behind the scenes, we need to go into the boardroom. Meet Matteo Messina, who was indeed the club's chairman, and alongside shareholders Anthony Perino and Pierre Anchetti. It is important to go into these because this is is where the downfall of this club all fell apart. During the promotion to Ligue 1, they had a budget of 4.5 million and they still kept that same budget in Ligue 1, expecting them to have a incredibly tough task to try to stay in Ligue 1 when competing with so many clubs with established histories and finances that they simply cannot compete with. However, in that year, they fought on and had a great season in the grand scheme of things. The smallest budget by a million miles. The season had some great promise and some historic matches including wins against OGC Nice, Bordeaux and even Olympic Lyon with a 2-1 win at home. They gained confidence and obtained 21 points within a 8 game period. They were the second most informed side in Ligue 1 behind PSG. At the halfway stage, they finished 12th in the standings and were expected to keep their form up and stay up in the season. They even won a prize at the newspaper France Football to be given the achievement of the year. However, sadly, with many things in football, the cream always rises to the top and financially, that is also the case as they sadly finished 19th place in that season just ahead of Troyes. Only three points off survival. Ayaccio had a taste of the elite of French football and wanted to go straight back to the top, so they signed players ambitiously, keeping a lot of their high earning players and signed in a lot of new ones, ensuring a promotion back to the top. That season, however, they finished ninth place, and after two more years in League Two and a failure to get back their winning form, they played Le Mans FC in a playoff match between 18th place Ayaccio and the playoff team from the third division. Despite a 2-1 victory in the first leg, Ayaccio lost 2-0 in the return match and they were relegated to the Nationale, the third division of French football. This was the moment that everything 
fell apart. Before the season even started, there was hope that they may be put back into League 2, as financial setbacks at FC Sochaux may have caused them to get promoted back again, and Sochaux to be relegated. Unfortunately for them, after an appeal, Sochaux was confirmed to stay in League 2. Ayazio appealed this decision, and while waiting for a conclusion, they decided to boycott the first match of the season against Red Star, a postponement which would not be granted by the French Football Federation. As a result, they boycotted the first game of the national championship. This is one sign of the mental decision making at the helm at Ayazio. And this chaos followed them for the entire season. After a catastrophic winless streak across the entire season, they found themselves in second last in the standings. Ayazio only won four times in the entire season. And you may have realized that this is in the 2019-2020 season. So guess what happened this year? You guessed it, the COVID-19 pandemic. And unlike other divisions that kept going after the fact, the third tier of French football led by a points per game system and concluded the season, therefore relegating Ayazio from the third division to the fourth division. Despite them actually playing in the fourth tier for the 21-22 year, the season was canceled yet again due to COVID only nine games in. Therefore, they couldn't play for another year. However, because of financial problems at the club, they were indeed double relegated to the fifth division. This was due to a criminal case and a financial collapse at the helm of the club. They were relegated to the National Three, the fifth tier of French football. This was a rare occasion that we find administration to be the cause of relegation. And now we can get into the crime part of this story. In the summer of 2021, the club's president, Matteo Messina, and shareholders, Anthony Perino and Pierre Anchetti, have all resigned from the club. Several current and former members of Gazalek were arrested and the club's finances were seized. And the reasoning why was part of an investigation into the Corsian organized criminal group, Le Petit Bar. Corsia is a region of France which has high rates of mafia and crime. A large part of crime in Corsia was led to be held and organized at Le Petit Bar. This was a mafia in France and was suspected of drug trafficking, murder, extortion, and money laundering internationally, and several of its members are still on trial. The connections with the owners at Gazalek and Le Petit Bar caused the club's finances to be completely seized. This was an awful situation at Gazalek, which caused them to be relegated to the fifth tier of French football. The club needed a new man to step in, so stepped in a new man called Johan Carter. The issue is, he wasn't much better either. In the past, he also had many routes to crime and were indeed imprisoned for eight months for violence in an airport back in 2019. On the 12th of July, 2022, he was founded as chairman. However, he was only in charge for less than half a year because on the 1st of December of 2022, he was arrested and imprisoned for extortion, fraud, money laundering in an organized gang and association of criminals. And while the previous owners were suspected of having concealed bonuses and money laundering within the club, Gazalek has been found to be a club run secretly by members of Le Petit Bar, and while Johan Carter had great relations with members of that organization. And that leads us to where Gazalek Ayazio are now, which on the 30th of January, only 15 days ago of recording, they were put in compulsory liquidation. Their recent games in the National 3 were suspended and postponed and as of yesterday they had a court hearing to find out the fate of the club. As of this very moment, Gazalek Ayazio are liquidated, no longer functioning as a football team as many of their squad have been released and are leaving to go to other teams. They no longer have a team, they no longer have a chairman and they no longer have a club. There was hope that club legend Luis Poggi, who's been with the club for many years, was able to be put as a new chairman to try to save the club. Apparently, this is now falling apart. This may be the worst football club story that I may have ever listened to. The sheer rate of collapse from a football club from being at the top elite level of sport in a country to going down to the fifth tier in such a disgraceful fashion of ran by leaders of a mafia is one of the most incredible stories and with the liquidation you can see in the video that they had a great fan base the people and the culture of the city were behind them and all due to being ran by a complete set of clowns they no longer have a football club their fate as of right now is still to be completely decided however the idea that they will form up again with the same club 
is very unlikely. A Phoenix club will be created at the end of the year, as it is very likely that they will not be able to come to a conclusion on this football club. Tell me down below your thoughts about what has happened at Gazalek. I never knew that this was even happening. I want to thank a friend of the channel, Infinity, for his translation and helping me with this video. Tell me your thoughts down below in the comments. And if you ever have to complain about your football club and how it's ran, then... I mean, you can't really compare it to this. I hope you guys did enjoy. Let's try to hit 2,500 likes and also subscribe if you're new. And I will see you guys next time for another video. And peace out.